All right. So I hope to please share your details. I hope everyone shared your details. If anyone missed out, please provide your details in the chat box. I hope everyone able to hear my voice. Anyone having any issue with the voice? Yeah, it is good, sir. Little slow, like little slow is it is getting. It is getting little slow. Low, low, volume low. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I hope it is okay now. Yeah, it is good, sir. Okay. All right. We can hear you. Okay. So whoever joined now, please share your details. All right. Thanks for sharing your details, guys. So we'll start the class. In case you people are missed to share the details, please provide me your uh, details, your name, your phone number, your email address, so that I can forward you today's recording along with the document. And we'll see the practically in the coming sessions. Okay. So I hope everyone here is for Azure PI, Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Engineering. Anyone here is for MSBI or a Power BI, please help me with the details so that I can forward you the meeting link for the next sessions for this two profile. So currently we are only discussing about Azure BI services. If anyone wants interested in msba or a power bi you can please ping me your details i'll forward you the link for that all right so before starting with this one before starting to this azure pi is anyone know what is the azure what is the azure Yes, sir, it is a cloud-based service. It is a cloud-based service. Okay. And how this Azure name come across or like what services provides? What is a cloud-based means? What is a cloud actually? As we know, like there is a Google Cloud we have, Amazon we have, now Microsoft is you... yes sorry other than our own storage if we go for any cloud that is cloud cloud can't we save the other than this means like we can save in on premises also as yes yes on premises other than on premises if you use any other cloud so yes okay Okay. Anyone know before going to these questions, let's basic uh, we'll discuss what is BI actually. Anyone know this one? Before going to these classes, let's understand ground here. Business intelligence tools. Business intelligence tool, well and good. And what is BI? This BI process actually. What we do in business intelligence? In tool? Intelligence we are giving to the business. Intelligence giving to the business. Okay, good point. Yes. What actually, what kind of intelligence you are giving to the business? How help? Yes. To take the business decisions. Interacting dashboards. Interacting dashboard. Any other points? To take the business decisions, we are giving the intelligence to the normal data to uh, decision making data. Decision making data. Okay. Any other points you need to add? Intelligence data we are providing, the business data we are providing, that business to take the decisions, that is more important. Decisions. 
So if you go any company, so if you go any company, wherever the business is getting started, they'll be required as a data analyst, as a business intelligence. Any company, if you visit or any company they started, they required BI developer. That is what our job is not like just having today is uh, programming is there or Java is there, other programming softwares are there or not. This is not a matter with our job. Our job is evergreen. Wherever the business start, company starts, we required, they required as a BI developers, whether it is in terms of reporting, whether in terms of ETL development, in terms of data management. So these all are comes under the BI process. So I'll explain the BI process. I know the people here from different backgrounds. So for this course, there is no specific background is required, guys, to be clear here. For starting this course, I want to be clear. I don't want to hide anything. So for this course, no specific background is required. Not only for a, I'm pass out engineering, I only go for this course. No, if I'm a degree background, I can go for this course. If I'm a MCA background, I can go for this course. If I'm a diploma background, I can go for this course. There is no specific education background is required. Anyone can go and learn for this Azure BI platform. There is no physical software to get installed in your system. Everything we will be working under the cloud cloud it doesn't mean you are storing in the cloud anyone observe like when you are storing some gmail data drive data anyone observe you will get when you store some photos images in the google drive there's a 15 gb google is giving you where actually where it store it is we are acting we are acting like a virtually we are accessing in a mobile drive or we are actually accessing from laptop that documents images we are storing in our Gmails, we are actually storing it. Yes, definitely it is storing in the cloud, but that doesn't mean it is stored in the cloud. There is a physical data center is there, physical storage are there that we are going to discuss in a form of services. Physical storages are there. So it doesn't mean the on-premise is completely closed. No. When cloud started, again, there is a lot of opportunity for on-premises. So nobody is saving in the cloud. There is no like a cloud. Yes, you, as a virtual, you are accessing it. You are not physically maintaining it. Somebody is maintaining on behalf of someone, but they are also opportunities getting growth. That is what if we go somebody mind tree. I don't know people you are from mind tree. Anyone here company? So for mind tree people, most of the requirements they hire as a contract base for Microsoft. So this Azure is a platform, a cloud platform, which helping to the business in a cloud, cloud platform, then those services, whatever services they are providing at back end, the, the opportunity is also getting grow over there in Microsoft. So that is what contract based people are hired from Mindry company. Okay. So leave about that opportunity and on I'll later I'm going to explain the opportunity uh, right now the people are any background whether it is a BPO background whether it's a non-technical background any background okay any background whether I'm a BTEC background or whether I'm any uh, working in databases or you're working in ETL development people are from different environments guys please mute your mics I'll uh, answer your doubts. I'll give you some time. Whatever questions is there, you can ask me later. So for time being, just mute any questions are there, you can ask me, okay? So time being, please mute your mics. All right, thank you. So any background, whether it's a database background or ETL background or already people are working in MIS or already working in some other SAP or some other technologies, anyone can move for Azure. There is no doubt. Right now, we are more, mostly focusing on data factory. It is a very powerful tool for business intelligence, as we know, business intelligence. So before going to this BI process, see, business intelligence, not only just as a business intelligence word, as giving the input to the business is more important. That is what people when they start up some business what business is required i am from business background i invested lot of money on business i invested lot of money on a business 
end of the day i want to know how my business is growing whether i am getting a profit or not whether i am getting profit whether i am getting loss i need to know i invested lot of money on my business so when you invest some money on a business at least you need uh, some inputs that input is going to give by your data analyst team or they're going to give some your bi process team let's example i'll not go much technical today there are many non technical people here so let's understand people who know well and good people who don't know just listen first here then we'll go with the practical okay let's example you have a supermarket so like d mart like walmart or any other supermarkets what we do generally there we purchase some products right whether it's online or offline we purchase a product if you take on online like your flipkart amazon those are the shopping platforms if you go offline there is a supermarkets are there there is a dmarts are there or other platforms are there so what we do generally as a customer i'll go and i'll purchase some products there right as a customer what we do we go and we purchase a products there whatever the product it may be so that products we are generally calling a services in cloud what is the product i'll tell you later okay whatever currently in a supermarket there are different products we have as a customer what we do we go and purchase once uh, all the products purchased what we do we do some payment billing if you observe or not in the counter level you'll find on system there they have a billing application there are billing application that application may be developed in different platform java .net, html whatever it is that is not our headache that is not our headache the customer simply come to the uh, store they'll purchase some products the products uh, once they do some barcode they have a billing application it capture the quantity the price uh, the amount the uh, discount amount some profit and all it will be captured what what it will do they submit they'll submit that information whatever is there they'll submit this information through their uh, machine okay so this information where it will store whatever this information is there where it will store either it in their own system or they will connect with one one storage account maybe they connect with one storage account they have a, some good team they have some odbc connectivity jdbc connectivity these are the new words for the non technical people right some jdbc some odbc okay these are the connectivities okay i am a background bpo background i don't know all these terms but believe me this is a regular terms and you will find complete entire project you will find same thing so whatever you are storing the data what data people what they do people come to the they'll purchase some products and the moment they submit either they can save in the system in the own system they can save it here either because of huge transactions i cannot save in my system that is what i'm connecting with one storage account this is my storage account whatever the storage account may be depend upon the company project depend upon the company budget they some companies have good budget they go with the databases they purchase a premium they go with the google databases like sql they go mysql they go oracle or other things company have less they want to store in the cloud yes they can go with the cloud they can go with the uh, data lake they can go with the block storage they can go with azure sql or depend upon the company or they want to say in the files they can go csv they can go excel if you see last 10 to 15 years back if you visit to the bank what bank people they are doing it bank people storing the data in the excel if you deposited credited the amount in the bank you will be carrying a passbook to the bank and whatever the new accounts are there credited deposited your bank people what they do they maintain in the separate sheet in excel deposited credited account creations after 5 pm close they'll update in the live server next day if you take your passbook you'll have update okay you got amount and all but now it is what is happen lot of platforms are there we we cannot predict from where the data is coming so lot lot of platforms are there you can do through phone pay you can do through google pay you can do upi immediately your bank get updated how how it is possible through live data 
same thing here also what is happening wherever you store the data whether it's a csv whether it's excel whether it's a databases whether it's a cloud data data lake data this all data they are saving under one storage account or there is a on premises data whatever it is don't worry what is on premises what is cloud we'll discuss in detail level let's understand the approach what why we are what is the purpose of on premises what is this all ba i am explaining the ba concept if you understand the ba concept believe me after going to this after completing this class you can move whatever the platform you want whether it is a power bi or whether there is a lot of tool in the market regarding bi ssis is there for etl specifically ssrs is there for reporting this power bi is also one of the reporting tool okay there is a sap tools are there there is a cognos tableau i don't know if people have heard or not there is a click view is there there is a other tools are there again there is one of the powerful tools like in azure called data factory and there are other number of tools we have zapis is also is there one of the etl extensions are there task factories are there so a lot of things are there so why people are coming from different platform to the azure there is other there are different components are there there are opportunities are there that is what people are moving from this all platforms again in msbi there are three modules so whatever your platform is from or whatever the technical or non technical background you are from you can go for this so if you understand the bi process you can go for any of this approach if you understand the bi process how it works how company get benefited with the bi developers you can use any tools whatever they give you this is right now we are learning about the tool then we'll see later with that tool how we can develop something you are not doing any programming part here you are not developing any application like other programmers do we are not developing any something like a big applications we are just working with the tool given already developed tool is given from a from a companies like microsoft google and aws amazon web services they develop the tools that develop tools we are using to develop some business pro process or to take some business decisions we are helping them in a form of proper information proper data so again right now the data we cannot predict the data may be come from any format that is what here the data may come from any format structured data what is that the structured data or there may be a semi structured data it may be unstructured data we cannot predict right now the situation is like any format of data so earlier these are the traditional tools these all are the traditional tools we don't know traditional tools means till now okay structured data max to max semi structured data you can process there is no approach for json data there is no approach for unstructured data right now everything is doing through json through xml through unstructured data different live data we are getting so for that we are going for data factory so that, those are the powerful informations are there in the data factory what is that i'll show you practically for that let's understand so as a customer as a customer will purchase a product and whatever the product informations are there how much product price and all everything will be captured under the storage account why we are capturing the storage account because end of the day your uh, end of the day your business who is invested money on a business start up a business okay to start a business the owners the business owner they want what they want they want information they want inputs what inputs i want to see i want to take this decisions making so for decision making i want what you want first you want information how you get information your information you'll get through your information you'll get your information you will get through one second guys i hope everyone is able to hear my voice call it so what is that 
how you can take a decisions you require some information how information you'll get through some reports how what is that report the report contain the data right how the data you get the data may be come from any sources or any fire format so that's again in format maybe structure semi structure any format it may be how the data comes from the different format maybe different sources are there the sources may be anywhere you have to convert into proper structure you have to convert into proper format you have to convert into proper data or proper information then only the report can be generated because if i give raw data to this user he will not understand if i take a data if i give him he will not understand what business they are some business background if i ask him sir we have a data in sql server can i write select star query from and i'll give i'll give it but he'll not understand they want proper kind of graph proper kind of uh, images they want so that they can take a business decisions and this business data doesn't have that much of time they'll never see which customer purchase what product they always look the reporting on high level of information high level what is that means high level means like yearly data monthly data product wise data daily revenue generating data these are the high level information so this information only they required high level information for their reporting so to get this information we required some process bi process i cannot directly generate the report okay you are storing some information here in the live so storage account whatever you are doing that all transactions are storing inside a storage account that storage account we are calling as live storage or we are calling in terminology called oltp storage online transaction processing storage so earlier 10 to 15 years back there is no properly online transaction processing systems next day they are updating it right now whatever is happening in the live the amount is credited debited whatever happened the everything you can see right now because of the online transaction processing so what is happening here see as if i am using database i am going to hire a sql developer you can write a select query for me select star from product table whatever the result come here that whatever the result come that result in the table format i'll share the table format to the end user but he has to write a query he has to extract the data if tomorrow this business owners they ask you please share me the five years of data they want to analyze the five years of growth how you going to share five years of data will not maintain in the live storage live storage is max to max one week data max to max one day data my company we store only one day data max to max if i, I was working for ibm they are storing one week data in live storage not more than that maybe as you want you can store as many but there is a performance issues will come you cannot store more than one week or one day data inside a live storages why performance issues let's example here always perform like a dml operations it is always perform like here in live servers as a dml operations anyone know what is dml operation in sql anyone know sql language here data manipulation language what are the commands are there in data manipulation language uh, update insert yes. delete update insert delete because what is happening only three operations are performing here if somebody purchases a product he'll insert the records if somebody wants to return the product he will delete the entry if somebody want to exchange exchange the product he will update only three operations are performing in the live server so if somebody is trying to select the data and the operations are performing there may be a chance of blocking or maybe chance of okay you are making a good performance my sql developers are good performance tuning still people has to wait until this transactions complete every day you are not getting one or two customers there are millions of customer getting online offline the data is used right now the data we are using is data lake that means the data is very huge in volume 
So you cannot do a select query when the business is running. The after business, let's suppose your store is morning 9 a.m. it is starting and your store is closing 10 p.m. After 10 p.m. there is a system is idle. You can do whatever you want. Only one big data you can get. You cannot get five years of data. So how we can get a five years of data? So now your BI developers will come into the picture. Our work will, our job will start from here. Our job will start from here. Now we required BI developers not only for just to maintain the five years of data, the entire process to make a automation way. The entire process to make easy to understand the business people. The entire process to make easy to take business decisions. You no need to write a SQL queries. Everything we are providing a automation process. Every day, the moment he open the mails, he will get the report. Directly, he can directly go to that portal. He can access whatever the information he want. Everything we are making are ready for him. We are like a chef. We are like a chef. We are preparing a food for our customers. So for to prepare a food, what we required? Let's suppose I want to prepare some biryani. What we do? We required ingredients. We required rice. We required chicken. We required other stuff. We required masalas. All things if you give to me, I'll prepare a food. End of the day, the presentation to customer to give it the biryani in the plate, that other person, waiter will do that. My work is to just to cook the food. So that is what now we are preparing here as your food. When you have a proper information, when you have a proper requirement with you, when you have a proper ingredients with you, then only you can prepare a food. Before preparing a food, what you do? You will first wash cleanly the chicken and other stuff. Right? The same way here also, before going to prepare your data, what your role is to clean the data. Whatever the data it is, whether it's a structured data, whether it's a semi-structured data, whether it's an unstructured data. So what we are doing as a role of ETL developer, whether it's an on-premises ETL, whether it's a cloud ETL, our work is to make sure that the data should be extracted from any sources, any sources, and it should be transformed cleanly, and it should load proper way in your target. So what we are doing, instead of having only particular one week data, after 10 p.m. is closed, the system will be idle. I am going to extract, transform them, and I am going to load these three things you need to keep in your mind. So once you extract this data, I am going to load this information in one database or whatever it is. So this all information, I am loading into one everyday basis. Everyday basis, this is going to be scheduled. You are not going to develop regularly. You just need to monitor it. Once you develop, you have to do monitor how you are, how it is working. You have to monitor. So this data every day, daily basis data, daily basis data, you are storing here as a historical data. Here only readable data. Here only write data. Here we are not doing any read operations. Write, write operations we are doing. Here readable data. Analysis data. Analysis. Analysis data. Analyst data. This process we are calling here as OLAP system. And this is your data warehouse data. Data warehouse means warehouse. Warehouse means the huge volume of data is gathered in one central database. That is nothing but a data warehouse. It is also a database. Why we are calling warehouse? Because all region data, some data is coming from, this is hosted in, uh, this is hosted in one system. This is on-premises, physically storage there. Some are like online application. Some are like online application like a Flipkart, Amazon, Dmart also online application, supermarket is also. So this information may also come from online also. Depends your application. 
So all information, what we are doing, we are storing in one centralized data warehouse data. Okay. So non-technical people who are sitting here, these are again a new terminologies, you people. But believe me, it is again same words. Entire project, entire course is the same words. Complete your development will be the same work. Okay. So this is your data warehouse data. So what we do in data warehouse data, historical data we maintain. We maintain the readable data. We maintain the analysis data inside this database. That means your data is coming from a different regions. Regions are like the regions are like from India region, USA, UK or Canada, whatever, wherever it is. Whatever the structure data, semi-structure data after cleaning them. After cleaning them, we are storing that information. We are storing that information under data warehouse. Data warehouse. That's it. So after cleaning them, we are storing inside a data warehouse. Whatever the regions of data it is. And now next, what is the next? Once the data is processed, I am going to hire reporting developers. So now believe me, without having ETL knowledge, if you people are I don't know if people are from here, any reporting background like Power BI reporting background or SSRS reporting background or a Tableau reporting background or a ClickView or any other reporting background. Without knowledge on ETL, there is no requirement, there is no opportunity right now for reporting developers. So it may be your Power BI report. It may be your SSRS report. It may be your Tableau report or any other reporting third party reporting tool any other what reporting this what is their work their work is to take this sql query what they do they select this sql query instead of doing manually running they'll place in the report that's it their work is to just place this query inside a report nothing more job they do just to implement some query they write a query and they'll put it that query inside this one what power bi will do once the query is, instead of running manually, they'll take this query, they'll put it in the Power BI, that go and hit the table. The report, the whatever select queries, they go and hit the data. And whatever the information they get in the form of visualizations. In a reporting, what they do, they do scheduling part. Here they are doing manually running the query. Here they are doing scheduling part. That is a Power BI cloud services are there. You are scheduling the reports to the client directly. And some visualizations are there by seeing that visualization, users also will get more interacting to analyze the data. That's it. Nothing is more there. That is what when there is a reports are not reports are report development is no there, then their job is not there. After developing the report, what their job is. If the data is missing here, something is missing, this report, the user will ask you, the data is missing, please let me know why the data is missing. They will not analyze anything. They'll simply check in the report. Okay, report is showing. Canada data is not showing. Why it is not showing? The owner will ask, the users will ask to the report developers. You design the report, where is the data? Canada data, I cannot able to see. Then again, these people, what they do? They'll approach the, they'll go and they'll check in the database, why the data is not there. They'll backtrack why the data is not there, Canada data. Again, if the data is not there, they'll ask to the ETL developer. They'll ask the ETL developer. So, how this backtrack is processed? Then this, whatever the logic are there, it will explain. Either the data is not there, then they have to extract again why it is missed. Again, they'll go to the application, they'll check. So, this is this process we call in a form of, we use as a ticketing process. There's a concept called ticketing process in companies. There may be use remedy. They use some Jira. I don't know if people are from background. They you people are know this one. Remedy, Jira or some other ticketing platforms they use. So customer or a client will never directly directly contact to your developers. If you are a report developer, so he'll not contact you. There is a process in company. They will first create a ticket. Even, even for your normal thing also. Whenever you want, you first what you do, you call you call to the customer care. 
you cannot directly approach to that person bank person you first call to that customer care customer care will give the ticket the team and if if it is in scope of this persons they'll they'll solve that issue if that if that person is not there in that scope they'll return the ticket to the other team like this the ticketing process will work in company directly nobody have their contacts in the company nobody will directly call you there is a standard process are there in mncs so the why i am saying here is because if, until unless you don't know the etl at least you don't know how etl works because not only just here now i'll show you where the etl will use now see here what happening here is you are extracting the data okay that's well and good you are working for not only you are working for only all the regions you only working on specific region so specific region means you have to put a where clause in the report where your country is india you have to keep like that so instead of running a specific country what people do what etl developer they do they design one more separate database to easily to because data warehouse is a huge volume of data when you extract this user doesn't have that much of time to wait for your result see whenever you open the report the report is a query query will go and hit will the data and it will get the response to execute that to open the report taking time the developers these owners will not wait for you this much of time that is the reason again etl developer will come into the picture this data is processed to one of the database called data marts i don't know if you people heard or not so if you don't heard no issues i am going to explain you what is data mart in later okay so what we do we process our data into an another data marts there is a specific purpose of data mart is for specific regions of data we maintain in the data marts let's suppose you want to maintain specifically data like india region separately usa region separately uh for which you want you can directly extract the data from here you no need to go for data uh, data warehouse you can directly extract the reporting for directly from here you no need to go separately on data warehouse if you want go with the data but what we required our work is getting increased we required etl development here data factory team is required again to develop this approach every day every day the data has to load here also data has to, to get the data here first it has to get the from here the data has to get it from sources and the sources will have applications again etl development is required so some companies like a uh, business companies they don't want data marts they want predefined logics they want aggregated data i told you aggregated data people high level business they only do aggregated data that means sum minimum maximum <coughs> they'll do it so what people they want they want yearly data yearly revenue how many transactions are there counts sum these all are summary form data either you can go summary data or if you go business company huge volume of company they use a one more database called specific database called cubes tabular model multi dimensional model they'll maintain it so here predefined data aggregate data you no need to write aggregate functions some you don't need to write minimum you don't need to write so again here also you required the data to be moved from data warehouse again here also we required etl developments etl developers data factory developer or ssis team is required etl development team is required maintain the information the aggregate data in a cube model in a cube database aggregate data sum data minimum data logics to return here if this is also not sufficient people what they do they maintain aggregate data summary data summary databases so again this data comes from either this one you can extract the data either directly you can approach here also this is we call as aggregate data aggregated data or summary data summarized data so instead of writing a transactions instead of filtering the data from transactions you can do the reporting from directly summary level information that will be a quick reporting to display so to generate all these things again here also we require detail development so to deliver the report to deliver the report we require this process so this process we are calling as bi end to end process end to end 
process. So directly, not only just a reporting is going to done, everything end-to-end -end process we are doing from unstructured to structured data, from un raw data to meaningful data, meaningful information, we are sending to the business owner, we require DI end-to-end -end process. Currently, the situation is in on-premises. Currently, the situation in the company level. Now, what company people are there asking is like, they want to shut down these all machines currently. Whatever the logics are there, whatever the approach is there, they want to implement in the cloud. So what Microsoft suggested is, you no need to purchase a license. The license is very costly. If you purchase the SQL Server license, it is a key user based. It is a key user based. So to purchase this license, it's very costly. You cannot purchase for small projects. Right now we are using in our system is developer editions. So what Microsoft suggested is they implemented a concept called cloud. They implemented a concept called cloud. In a cloud, what they are doing, what they are asking, they implemented a one store. Okay, they implemented one store. They are asking you no need to purchase any systems. Oh, no need to purchase. Yes. Ravi, any questions? So they are asking you no need to purchase any systems, no need to purchase any storages. Generally, let's suppose in your on-premises, in your on-premises, when you want to purchase any storages, let's suppose you purchase in your on-premises in your system, you have a 500 GB, 500 GB storage you have. But what happens suddenly, transactions are getting high. Your system support 500 TB. Okay, no issues. If if you want to increase 1 TB, 2 TB, will your system will support or not? That is more important. You you can in, increase the GPs external. You can ask your IT team. You can add external hard disk. But system will support that 1 TB, 2 TB or not. If it is system not support, still you are forcing it. That system may get a performance issues, degradation issues, lagging issues. So it is very difficult in on-premises to do this. Either you need to delete the existing data or you have to move the data to some other locations. Make a 500 GB within that 500 GB. Otherwise, if you add, increase the GBs, then you have to wait. You have to make a, the performance issues will start. So in the cloud, you no need to worry about that database size also. Today is 500 GB. You, tomorrow you want to increase 1 TB, 2 TB. Immediately effect it will change. And the system architecture will automatically capture and automatically adopt that all the resources. You no need to worry about that. Only you have to worry how much you want to take and how much GB you are using, you have to pay that amount only. Here, what you are, your maintenance cost, you are paying it. Your storage capacity, you are paying it. The separate team is required for that. You need to maintain separate temperature that storages, everything you are taking in on-premises. But in cloud, you need to just pay how much you are using it. Here, what you are doing? Physical installations are happening for ETL development. ETL tools, not required. Earlier, we were using standard traditional model, structured data. Now you have everything here, semi-structure, unstructured, whatever you want, whatever the format you want, you can easily extract the data. Earlier, you are using the SQL Server as a licensed. Here also, you'll provide a license one. But you no need to purchase fully after three months, one year project. Where you're going to do after you don't have a project, you purchase a license in very costly. After one year, you don't have a project, then you cannot so cannot sell in OLX the softwares. So what Microsoft suggested is you we, you just ask, you just come to our store, we are providing you the same kind of license. And you use how much you are using and pay that amount only. Like a pay as a rental. Pay as you go. Pay as you go. How much you are using? Pay amount. How you will be staying in the rent house? How much period of time you are staying in the rent house? You have to pay the amount. The same with the cloud is the same. How much time you are using it? You have to pay for that. How much storage you are storing? You have to pay for that. That simple it is. So the this all information can be easily accessed in the store. The store name they are asking you to visit the store name. They are given the name called Azure. The Microsoft, 
the store name as given as Azure. How you go to the Amazon Flipkart? There also store you purchase the products. Here also is a store where you can purchase the services. The services are databases, applications, ETL development. These are the services you can go and purchase. And you need to pay how much you are using it. If you are not running in the night time, the system is not on. System is not on in the night time. And I no need to pay for that amount. So, whatever the storages you are using it, whatever the system you are installing it, the back end, the back end, somebody is working for you. Whatever you are accessing, like a virtually cloud, but back end, there is a data center. There is a data center. So Microsoft have their own data center. Wherever you want, you can select. You want India region, you can select India. Because end of the year, you go and audit there in their location, how they're maintaining, what kind of securities they are using it. We can go and visit to the locations and we can check their standards. So that is what Microsoft have own opportunities. They are, have a lot of opportunity on Microsoft for support for their clients, like in Azure or other different uh, tools are there. Right now we are using Azure. The next is like different tools like they have Synapse Analytics, they have a fabric, different tools are coming in the market. So there are a lot of opportunities on Azure Microsoft also. So physically, whatever data you store, they store in the physical data center. On that data center also, you can decide where you want accordingly. So when you log into the Flipkart, Amazon, what you see there, okay? You see there, there are different categorizations, right? You will see there are different categorizations, products separately, gadgets separately, different uh, things you will see there when you log into the portal, show, online shopping portals. The same way, when you go to these platforms, there is a GCP platform. Right now, a lot of cloud providers are, but more popular are three popular services, AWS and Azure and GCP. So this also, this cloud provider also providing three platforms. One is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. So this complete cloud platform providing the three kind of services, infrastructure, platform, and a software as a service. Okay, these three platforms has been divided. So what is that infrastructure as a service, whatever physically storages, Physically, you are using it. That all comes under the infrastructure as a service. The platform softwares, whatever is there, like SQL Server and other softwares are the platform. The software is already developed one, which we are using it. So what all these things we'll discuss in the next class. So same architecture, same EBI end-to-end -end process you need to design in the cloud. So instead of developing in on-premises, I'm going to explain this BI end-to-end -end process in tomorrow's class in this cloud, okay? Understand the BI process, can we go practically?